Let me tell you a story. I used to always believe that the more followers a person had, the better they were. Two guys could say the exact same thing, except the one with more followers was more reliable and trustworthy. Otherwise, they wouldn't have that many followers, right? I found out the hard way that this was actually wrong. And in this video, I'll explain to you exactly why that is the case. And make sure you stick around until the third and final point because it's an important one. And I think you boys really need to understand that point. So there's a couple of problems when it comes to taking advice from successful guys, the guys who are already at the top, the guys who you idolize, the guys who you would love to trade places with. So let me point out three of them for you. I must note though that this video isn't for you to stop watching popular influencers altogether. It's just a quick note and something that you should become aware of because it's very valuable to know in your mind. So number one is a lack of relatability. When guys get to the top, they usually lose that sense of relatability. When they're at the bottom, they're grinding. They're in the trenches like the rest of us. However, as guys start to gain followers and popularity, they start to lose that relatability a bit. You know, they hang out with more successful guys. They hang out with people on their now new level. And they kind of forget about the guys behind them. You know, 99% of the people out there are complete beginners. They have no experience, they have no idea what they're doing. But these successful guys will start to change the way they speak and start to change the content that they make based around their current situation, which not a lot of people can rel relate to. And most people relate to, you know, being poor, being overweight, being uh, socially awkward. These are, these are the things that most people relate to. However, when these guys start to get successful, and I'm not talking about anyone in particular, but... When these guys start to gain popularity, gain followers, gain, you know, traction in the media, they do start to change their tone a little bit. They're not as reliable. They don't speak to people like friends anymore. They speak to them more like fans. I've noticed it a lot with uh, influencers and people on social media. They change their tone very quickly as they start to rise up, especially with the quick popularity, the quick gain in fame. There's a very you know differential between uh, where, what content they're sharing and what their fans actually want or need in, for that matter because like I said they start to become less relatable you can't see them as a friend anymore you see them as oh, so he's an idol now he's someone I'm looking up to now you know we're not looking eye to eye and having eye contact conversation anymore I'm down here and you're up here that's kind of how it feels when these guys that you like and you support gain success and gain popularity and I get that it's just a byproduct of success and it's, it's inevitably going to happen but I'm just making sure that you boys are aware that they become less relatable and obviously there's a big time scale difference all right so what worked for them back in the day you know what worked for them at the time or what worked for them when they were in the situation where they're poor, or when they're overweight, or when they're socially awkward. Times were different back then. So they lose the connection with, they lose the dynamic, they lose the connection with what is happening currently. Because they're not currently in that situation. They don't have first world experience. They're thinking about past experiences and mixing it with what they see. But this two second world experiences is not a first put person point experience i hope you boys are understanding what i'm trying to say here it's not that they're, they're not living in that you know like i said poor uh, unhealthy socially awkward they're not living in that right now so they can't share their journey whereas back in the day they were and they could share it from first person viewpoint they have to now share it from second uh, secondary viewpoints so keep this in mind when you do watch these popular influencers, YouTubers, whatever you watch. Second point I want to talk about is incentives. So what I mean by this is that when guys become successful, uh, and I say guys, I mean anyone really, guys, women, uh, attack helicopters, whatever you want to call them. When they start to become uh, successful and gain more attention, popularity, they start to make uh, content for the wrong reasons. And look i'm not knocking these guys for you know making products i have my own products it's something that you need to do it's something that you should be doing if you have a personal brand however the incentives start to go out the window like whereas guys would 
make content because they're reliable and they know that it works for people. Instead of doing that, they they shift to kind of more businessy marketing manipulation sort of things rather than um, authentic, genuine, good products to help people. Um, and it's not everyone. It's definitely not everyone. And like I said, you kind of have to do it in in some ways. Uh, there's different ways to go about it. There's more ethical ways to go about it than others. Um, and like I said, it's it's kind of inevitable that that that, that is going to happen. But just because one guy has so many more followers than another guy doesn't mean that his course is going to be better or his mentorship is going to be better or his private community is better like i'm not I'm, that's not how it works not ju- just because one guy has more followers doesn't mean that his course is automatically better or his private community is automatically better you know this guy could be less popular but he's got some really hardcore fans who would do anything for him whereas this guy is very popular he's got a lot of followers but no, none really close. No, no close hardcore fans. Just a lot of half fans. So just keep this in mind when you watch these successful uh, influencers, these successful YouTubers. Just keep this in mind because their incentives definitely change as you go up. And I get it's hard uh, to not change your incentives, to not change the reasons that you do to that you do what you do for. And I think it comes down to like having a good base why like why am i doing this go back to first principles why did you start and then if they're doing it for the reason that they started then that's all good it's all fine but just be aware like i'm not i'm not trying to scare you i'm not trying to put you off doing what you're doing carry on bro but just have this in mind become self-aware i just i need need you boys to start becoming more self-aware and start opening your eyes to these type of things because it goes on every single day i don't want you boys to be naive to these things uh because influencers will take advantage of you if you are naive to these things. The third and final point is this, and it's, it's quite a big one, so I'm going to try and explain it as well as I can. Popular influencers, or guys that you look up to, will tell you what not to do. For example, they'll tell you the mistakes that they made along the way and what not to do. However, those mistakes is what made them, it's what moulded them, it's what crafted them, it's the reason they have the traits, the knowledge, the skills that they have today. Without those mistakes, they wouldn't be the guy that they are today. So there is a, a definite differential between mistakes and what they tell you not to do. Like, for example, one popular influencer could be like, oh, okay, don't gain weight. Don't become fat. And, it, and it's good advice. It is very good advice. However, just going back to my life, if I didn't become overweight when I was younger, then I don't think that I would value my body as much now. And I put a high priority on my health and my body because I was so overweight when I was younger and I realised the bad negative side effects of it. That I cherish my body, that I see the value in it. And I think a lot of guys, you see it, they have good genetics and when they're 18, 19, 20, all the way up to like 24, 25, they don't take care of their bodies, but... They have good genetics so they can get away with it. You know, I know boys with six-pack abs who drink alcohol twice a week. Like, some guys are just built like that. However, when it comes to the later years uh, of your of your 20s and the start of your 30s, that'll start to catch up with you. I've seen people in my life just take that, that, that downfall very quickly. And they have no idea how important it is to take care of themselves and their body because they've never experienced the bad things. They never made the mistake of becoming fat. They never made the mistake of having a bad diet because they didn't see any negative consequences. It's like the rich kids' parents. You know, they they usually turn out to be, and again, it's not all rich kids, but they usually turn out to be pretty entitled because they expect things. They've expected things when they were younger and they bring it into their adolescence and, in, and into their adult years. So by saying, oh yeah, don't make this mistake, don't do this because it's a mistake, they kind of throw things off because that's what moulded them, that's what shaped them, that's what made them the person that they are. Now, obviously, there is some mistakes that you don't want to be making. You know, you don't want to be going to jail. You don't necessarily want to become bankrupt. You don't want to disown your family. Like, these are mistakes that you definitely don't want to make because they're so uh, catastrophic to your life, because they're so damaging. However, the recoverable mistakes, the mistakes with not a lot of... Uh, damage being done to your life they're the mistakes that you need to be making 
you know go and get rejected by that girl go and put on a little bit of weight because then you realize how bad it is to be overweight like do you see what i'm saying here like the guys who could get any girl they wanted when they were younger they don't cherish women as much now they don't have the same um you know feelings towards women as guys who couldn't get women built themselves up and now they can get women it's a completely different dynamic and like i said there's a cav- there's two caveats to it number one is they need to be recoverable mistakes so not you know mistakes that are going to completely damage your life such as going to jail disown your family etc like don't don't do mistakes that's going to get you killed or in jail like don't 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 be like oh yeah let me just jump off this building because dom told me to make make a mistake no that's not, that's not what i'm saying here what i'm saying here is you need to make mistakes that you can recover from like i said go and get rejected by that girl go and put on a bit of weight whatever the mistake is that you can learn from and that's the second caveat you must learn from these mistakes do not make the same mistake twice become self-aware to realize that okay that was a mistake what can i learn from it and then those lessons that you learn from the mistake that is what will push you forward that was that is what will push the needle and and separate you from the crowd most guys are so risk adverse they don't do anything they make very little mistakes And therefore they don't learn. They don't learn from making mistakes. I promise you the best way to learn is to do something, fuck it up, and then learn from it. That is the best way. That is how the successful guys got to where they are today. You know, you look at people like Michael Jordan. He he says that he's missed like 9,000 shots. He's lost like 3,000 basketball games. These are the things that shape him. These are the things that make made him who he was. Those experiences. So by successful guys telling you, hey, don't do this, don't make this mistake, don't make this mistake, and you try and live this optimal, perfect life, it's kind of like a double-edged sword where you don't get the lessons from the mistakes, and they're, they're, they are the things that make your skin thicker. They're the things that give you experience. Like I said, I've given you examples of you know when I was overweight and then I lost a lot of weight, and that's why I cherish my body and see the value of it. Like the rich kids, rich kids... Uh, who have rich parents they feel entitled to money they don't know what it's like to come from poverty to be uh, you know in the trenches they don't know what it's like and they can't relate to that so just have this in mind that when successful guys tell you oh, this is a mistake I made then you shouldn't make this mistake just remember that the mistakes are the things that shape you the failures are the things that make you who you are the, the failures are the things that do real progress in your life if you can learn from them that's the thing make sure the mistakes aren't you know and i'm not saying go out and look for mistakes i'm not saying go out and do things to to get to make mistakes on purpose try and do your best try and succeed but just know that if you do fail if you do make a mistake no way is that the end of the world no way is that your life ruined because you learn from it and if anything it's a positive Whenever I fail now, I, I, I step back and I, I journal about it and I look at it and I'd be like, wow, okay, that, that sucked. I failed. But where's the silver lining here? You know, every cloud, where's the silver lining here? What is that little nugget, that lesson that I can pick out from this and make sure I don't make the mistake again? Make sure I learn from it and don't make the same mistake again. So just bear this in mind, boys. Keep this at the top of your mind when you listen to successful uh, entrepreneurs, influencers, etc. Okay, but I'm going to round it off there. Remember, no one is coming to save you. Take accountability and take responsibility for your life. Start thinking for yourself. And apart from that, have a very good day, King. Peace out.